Yeah. Lynn, how are we doing? Hey, Josh, how's it going, man? Uh, I'm a little worse for wear after looking at the depth chart, but we're going to try to get through it. Uh, Ryan Poles said he's looking at every avenue, right? Trades, free agents. I think if you look at that depth chart, they need at least two guys, right? At least. At least two guys. So free agent market right now, Yannick Ngakwe, Jason Pierre-Paul, Justin Houston, Frank Clark, Leonard Floyd. If I give you two of those guys, who are you taking and why? Can I get Smoot? Can I, can I throw him in there? Sure, you see what Jake, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll throw in Smoot. Uh, you know, he played at Illinois. He <laughs> might have a little love for, uh, for the Bears. He averaged about five sacks over the last four years, so that's something. Yep. Uh, Yannick Ngakwe is the person who I really feel the best about. Uh, he's kind of mercenary when it comes to being a, a sack artist. Yeah. You know, he's bounced around, but he's been productive wherever he's gone, so I do like his ability. Frank Clark, I kind of feel the Kansas City connection there. Yeah. Uh, I, sometimes I feel he's maybe better suited in a 3-4, but I think he's athletic enough and he's shown enough versatility throughout his career. He can be that down lineman that we need to stand up against the run, and he's he's been pretty consistent throughout his career. So I feel good about Frank Clark, Yannick Ngakwe, but Smoot, I think, might be the more affordable of those two guys, or those three guys, I should say. How do you feel about Justin Houston? He knows Matt Eberflus from Indianapolis, knows Ryan Poles from Kansas City. Yeah. He's a veteran, but I feel like a little long in the tooth probably wants right. to compete for a title, right? Yeah, I, I kind of feel the same way. I'm, I'm a bit of an ageist, I guess. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> No, I mean, he's been productive the last couple of years, surprisingly, yeah. you know, for a person who has gone further, you know, in his career than they most would have expected. Yeah. Um, and again, when you get someone like Houston, you're basically saying, I want you for this year right. and this year alone. I, you're not planning around Houston. I think with Frank Clark, his youth, he's 29, he'll be 30. It gives you a little bit more leeway if you don't find someone in the draft next year. Mm-hmm. I think Yacht Ngakwe gives you, because uh, he, he hasn't had a lot of wear and tear, though he's been in the league for a while. So I like his long-term ability to give us a little more length at that position, again, if we can't find somebody in the draft so those are the two get two guys and those are two names i think everybody's really excited about but again i kind of do like smooth a little bit as well <laughs> because you know he's a more affordable and i think you can with him again a little bit younger you can get a little more length out of him so that if you do get someone who can be a premier edge rusher you can still maintain him for depth i'm gonna throw one trade name at you it's not chase young because that's not going to happen <laughs> uh but today the jets restructured carl lawson's deal so they now have six edge rushers they're deep four guaranteed money bryce huff 25 last season among edge rushers with 170 snaps first in pressure rate first in true pass pressure rate third in hits what do you think he's four four point three million dollars I, I think at this point <laughs> you know it's, it's such a low bar to jump over yeah. that sure you why talk not? me into it why not why not uh I mean, and that's kind of what we're we've seen polls do you're, you're finding younger guys guys that have your ability to maybe grow with yeah. your team uh, but it's not going to cost them much so that if it doesn't work out you're not being hit with large cap numbers so I can vibe with that, and I'm okay with that. Uh, but again, I mean, the best way is to have your talent be homegrown, and you want to be able to do that in the draft, which means next year. Uh, but this year, it's, it's going to be tough, man. We're going to have to count on our defensive uh, interior pressure, really. And it's, I know we focus so much on sacks. You know, that's, that's the big stat that we look at. But really, it's pressures which lead to turnovers. And if you look at over the last several years when uh, Iberflus was a defensive coordinator with the Colts, uh, those four years he was there, they averaged about 15 and a half or so interceptions. Yeah. And that's what you want. They had three consecutive years where they had 15, and then last year there's D.C. that had 19. And even last year, as, as poorly as we played uh, in terms of forcing pressure or causing pressure, we had 86 last year. The graph showed that. That's pathetic. <laughs> But even with that, we still have 14 interceptions. So that's, that's a good, good sign to me. So that with more pressure, I believe that there'll be an uptick, especially with our secondary. We consider our secondary to be the strength of our defense right now. A young, aggressive player, as we know, Eddie's a ball hawk. So I, I look for that to be something significant. And also, too, if you look at Iberflus, uh, the years he was there, the leading, the top tacklers were the, my, the linebackers and also the safety. And a brisker is that kind of guy that, you know, he, he showed last year he got four sacks last year. So he's a person who can penetrate, give you a little distance in terms of his versatility, whether it's in secondary in terms of covering and maybe intercepting passes or deflecting passes, but also rushing the passer and causing some pressure because we're not getting it from the edge. <laughs> so we're going to need it from somewhere. You mentioned next year's draft. I don't know if you've heard. Two first-round picks. Yes. Do you have any names that Bears fans might want to, like, keep an eye on this fall? I mean, there are a lot of people, and it, yeah. it's going to change everybody. I mean, it really is. I mean, yeah. from year to year, there are people who fly up the depth charts that you weren't even thinking of. I'm thinking about Trevon Walker. went from no one was talking about it to number, number one, one pick one. overall. Right. Uh, and so I, I don't put a lot of stock in who is there right now because mm-hmm. uh, there were guys that we thought, even this year, that fell back. You had Miles Murphy, who was a top-five guy going into last year, fell all the way down, almost fell out the first round. Yeah. So that that's going to change. I'm not worried so much about next year. They'll 
they'll be there, kind of like running backs. You're going to have some edge rushers that'll that'll show up, uh, but we really need to, I think, establish a defensive line. And right now, it seems as though Poles wants to do it from the inside out, and I think that's a good good thing to do. You talk about the defensive line. Last year, Travis Gibson led the team in pressures with 30. That's terrible. Robert Quinn, who was on the team for seven games, finished fifth. He finished fifth, Glenn. So I want they went with Zach Pickens, Jervon Dexter. Of those two guys, who do you think makes a bigger impact in year one? Great question. Um, the answer is yes. <laughs> Both. <laughs> Both. Uh, I, I think Pickens is the quicker of the two, yeah. and so you would tend to think the more explosive, which would lend itself to believe that more pressure. Yeah. But I, when I look at uh, Javon Dexter, he gives you that, uh, that physical presence. He's kind of like a forceful pressure. He's that person that can push back into that, that pile, whereas Zach may beat you more with his quickness and a little bit of his strength. But you know, Javon, I mean, combined, I think both these guys can give us something we haven't had in a while, and that's athleticism, and that's an ability to get up the field, and with Javon's length, sometimes even cause a deflection at the, at, the, at the defensive line. So I really like what they present right now because nothing's happened yet, so I can, I can live in that, in that realm of, you know, this is what they're going to do. Uh, but I, I think between the two, I think Javon from down to down is going to give it to you. I think Pickens more on the third down, where we know it's going to be third and long. I think with Javon, you're looking at one, two, and or three in terms of first, second, or third down. I think he gives you that, that type of um, uh, ability to do that for the course of, of however, many, however long a drive might be. What about Tyreek Stevenson? Does he have the talent oh, to Dude, take I'm Kendall so, Miller's job? I'm so pumped for, <laughs> for Tyreek. I, I really am. Um, yeah, I, I see him starting this year, and I, I see him possibly getting anywhere from five to six interceptions and being that potential person that we talk about being defensive player of the year, or rookie defensive player of the year, excuse me. Um, but I think he has that type of uh, charisma on the field. I think he has that type of veneer in terms of how he attacks, and that's what we need. And that secondary is going to be able to attack, especially if that interior can get that push. And I know we're not getting it from the edge, but... The quickest way to the quarterback, everybody, is a straight line. And the quickest way is from the, in, from the interior right to the quarterback as opposed to going around the edge. All right. The Bears need help on the edge. We don't need any help here. Glenn Morgan, thanks for knowledge. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it.